Hello and welcome from the Karyala Raceway in Yonsu, Finland for the 43rd annual Karyala Grand Prix, the crown jewel of the TM Master Cup Series. Going back to when this was a multi-class race between cars in the Western Block and the Eastern Block during the Cold War. The field heads down into the West Curve for the first of 72 laps, then up through turns two, the Madigan Corner, turn three, Sorolla Park is the name of the sand pit on the outside of turn four, turns five and six lead up to the North Curve, down the North straightaway into the Kalela Hairpin, which has caught out several cars this week. The Dwyer S has always been uh, very fast and very treacherous. Turns 10, 11, and 12 set up for the very fast mallet corner. A very fast banked corner to end the lap. And now let's have a run through of the starting grid. On the pole is Joe Olenek from West Haven, Connecticut in car number 23. Yet to win a TM Master Cup Series race, but in this young season, Olenek has been very quick and has shown that he deserves that promotion into a hot as Walter car. Flanking him on the outside of the front row, local favorite and defending winner and series champion Arto Kekkonen in car number one. He will drive a Gessler for Carl Richter's team. Row number two, it is Ohio's Cameron Taylor in car number seven, driving for Lenard International and David Krikorian in car number 13, who has been strong here in the past. Row number three, Ingrid Hadeland in car number 19. She will have the most starts for a Norwegian driver in TM Master Cup Series history when she takes the green flag here today. Saul Fischel, the rookie points leader, is on the outside of row three. The sensation has been very strong this season. On row number four is Minnesota's Kevin Dwyer, another former winner of the race. And on the outside is the much improved Colton Morel Mizar of Chris Davenport, once again suiting up for the Michelin Suns. In row five, you will find Marco Castaneda, the third of the three Carl Richter cars in today's race. He won earlier in the year at Road Atlanta and has been very strong so far. On his outside is Scott Soidler in car number 26. The veteran has been very good here in the past, yet to win the race. This could be his best chance in years. In row number six, you will find Daffy Howard in car number double zero. Endurance and reliability are going to be key for her with the Rucker Motorsports team to make their way through the field and emerge with flying colors today. On his outside, Adrian Devereaux in car number 74 has won everything there is to win in the TM Master Cup Series, except he has never won this race. Only been on the podium here once. Since then, he has looked fairly ordinary here in the past. However, this year he insists things are going to be different. Going back to row number seven, you have Jenny Kuznetsov actually failed to qualify for this race. However, Tony Durbin, his teammate, subbed himself out because he felt that Kuznetsov would be better in the race. On his outside is Alicia Reyes in car number 99, the only driver in the field today to hold a pilot's license. The number on this car, 99, is a tribute to the all-female aviation group, the 99, which was founded by Amelia Earhart. This car will be crewed by the Lynx Racing TM Lights team, making this car undoubtedly the most controversial entry on the entire grid today. Teams are normally only limited to running three cars maximum. Heading up row eight is Su Xiaoyu, the Chinese driver, making his third career Master Cup start, and he is the first mainland Chinese driver to start this race. On his outside, Vincenzo Pochisato, who has been one of the stars that has shown up to this race regularly, he is the only FM in the field today. Look out for car 175. He has always provided a lot of excitement here. Row 9 sees two drivers making their first Master Cup Series starts. Phil Purpura, car 21, has had a long career in endurance racing, and there's not many people doubting his experience level. And flanking him in car number 47 is Kareem Washington, the TM Lights points leader. While he's not the only black driver on the grid, he is the only black driver to also have a black team owner and Washington has been very impressive in the TM Light Series so far. Let's see what he can do in a TM Master Cup Series car. Row 10, Tom Moore in car number four will have three-time Cariola winner Leonid Roderick on his pit box calling strategy for him today. And on his outside is Volpe's test and reserve driver, Rachel Rainsford, who is coming back after sitting out last year due to giving birth to twins. On row 11, you have Woody Watts in car number 61, driving for Power Steering Incorporated, making his first start here at Cariola since 2010. And on his outside in car number 11 is Liv Eklund, driving in place of Davina Henton. About five months ago, no one was really sure that Eklund was even going to be in this car at all, or whether or not she would have a driving career or an engineering career with Lynx. Keep an eye out for both of these cars on row 11. Two other drivers to keep an eye on are in row number 12, Ryan Matthews in the number 06 Aspira. The owner driver has been very fast here in previous years. He has a fantastic qualification record. 
in his own car, and Luciano Savarel has been incredibly quick here throughout the course of the week. For those of you who are superstitious, when Savarel won this race in 2015, he started in 24th position, the same place he is today. In row 13, we have the first of the Ferdinand United cars driven by Darren Cardell, who has won TM Master Cup Series win to his name at Ohio. The Ferdinand United team has a couple of specially outfitted Gesslers for today's race. Uh, they don't have the most visible numbers on them, however their speed cannot be uh, doubted today. On his outside is Antero Vertanen for the Sylvan Racing Team in car number 56. Heading up row number 14 is one of Vertanen's teammates, Apo Anselmi, the youngest of the three Sylvan Racing drivers on the grid today. Anselmi's background comes mostly from rallying, however he has been dabbling in touring cars in Germany. And on his outside is Scott Bates, the very popular veteran from Oklahoma. No driver understands the value of patience in allowing a race to come to them quite like Scott Bates does. And that's what propelled him to a win here in 2017. On row 15, you'll find Chuck Johnson in car number 32 driving for Hazard Racing in this very distinctive brown and orange car. Johnson comes to this series from the FARC ranks and the short tracks of America. Hastert Racing scored a double top 10 here last year. And flanking him in car 187 is Patrick Feldhofer in the second of the Ferdinand United cars. Feldhofer had an easy time qualifying for this race, but his time was only good enough to put him 30th on the grid. This team claims to have very good race pace, but we'll have to see when the lights go out. In row number 16, Giselle Vignon in car number 500. It's going to be a very easy time reading the number on that car. This is the only Kanako car to qualify for today's race. And starting in a lowly 32nd is Greg Woodard, who showed some very good long run pace all throughout practice. We'll have to see how the factory Lycoya driver does today from 30 seconds on the grid. In row number 17, we have one of the more impressive rookies running full time on the circuit, Timothy Ruiz in car number 33. And on his outside is Kurt Pliskin, just fresh off of a win at the round of Sweden. Nobody has ever won Sweden and then the Coriola Grand Prix, and it'll be an uphill battle for Pliskin if he is to do so today. In row 18, we have Juho Kivala, the third of the Sylvan Racing cars in car number 57. He's been running full time in the series for the past four seasons, back to a part time only schedule for him. And on his outside, Ian Cooper. They'll be rolling off in 36th in the Nest Best car number two with a bit of a rainbow paint job on that car today. In row number 19, we have two very experienced veterans. In number 20, we have Gaspar D'Souza driving for Ortega Motorsport, the only Ortega car to qualify for today's race. And on his outside, Zelda Ashby in car 55 in her usual familiar green and gold livery. Going back to row number 20, we have Dutchman Peter van der Schmidt in car 109, finally making his debut after coming very close to making this race for five years in a row. He's shown a lot more pace than he has in years past, and he got himself into the race very solidly. On his outside in car number 68 is John Dilks driving Dan Timothy's signature number 68. The journeyman from New Jersey is hoping to make a good run from 40th on the grid. In row 21 we have Dave Wilson making his debut in car number 176 for the Yogiyama team. He'll roll off in that very beautiful SAR. On his outside is Christopher Loxanen in car 107, the only Tenere in the race. Loxanen has qualified for this race five years in a row. In row 22, we have Carter Fitzgerald, who, along with Ryan Matthews, are the second ever married couple to compete against each other in a TM Master Cup Series race. Alexis Rainsford and Chris Davenport were the first. And on her outside, in car number 49, is Morgan Le Fay, the independent driver from England hoping to work some magic from 44th position. And bringing up the rear in row number 23 is Tessa Strassenberg in car number 29, dropping to the back of the grid after an engine change. Strassenberg is the first Afro-German to start a TM Master Cup Series race. She is the daughter of former driver Johann Strassenberg. And starting last on the grid is 2014 Cariola Grand Prix winner Alessandro Rossini driving the Volpe Racing Team car number 3. This race has never been won from this far back on the grid before, but Rossini hopes he can make history and be the first driver to do so. And there it is, the cars and drivers that'll take the green flag for the 43rd Cariola Grand Prix. The quiet before the storm. The grid is clear of mechanics and support staff. It is now just the 46 drivers and 46 cars preparing to do battle for 72 laps. 
and for the 43rd time, the Crayola Grand Prix is underway. What a start by Arto Kakinen in car number one, getting a great run around Joe Elena, Cameron Taylor, and Ingrid Hadeland. Crane beginning to pressure as well. Four wide into the first corner, usually doesn't work. Here we're looking at the uh, famous gopher camera. Arto Kakinen leads. Cameron Taylor looks like he's fought his way up to second. Hadeland is in third. Saul Fish will be getting to work his way forward as well. Kakinen in car number one with a great start. He won here last year, picking up right where he left off. Hadeland slotted her way into second place in car number 19 for Lynx Racing. Their last win was here 20, in 2013. As Greg Woodard's around in the background, there is Feldhofer off in the 187. That's Cooper had a separate incident in car number two, trying to uh, miss that. And that's Vander Schmidt off. Uh, that's unfortunate. The Dutchman was hoping to have a good run here today. Finally qualifying after so many near misses. Not gone his way, and neither of Cooper, but Cooper's record here over their career has been absolutely wretched. Um, as uh, here is Hadland in the 19, uh, trying to hold off Cameron Taylor in the 7. Lynx Racing's uh, record here now has been uh, decent, but oh, here is Marco Castaneda is off, and oh, look. And looks like third gear is gone. We'll be using graphics like that on the right um, to indicate some uh, driver to, to team communications. Uh, communications from the pit wall are in italics. Uh, Castaneda uh, does not use English on the radio with his crew chief. Um, so that's why we are using that, um, uh, that method. And he is, of course, not the only one to do so. Joe Olenek has fallen back to fifth place. Uh, as we now look at this camera angle again, after lap one does get you a, an idea of how much the field has kind of strung itself out. Top four really kind of broken away. Kevin Dwyer got off the line pretty well in car number 72. Another car that really had a, a decent opening lap looked like was Eklund in car number 11. A bit further down the field, but that's a pretty easy car to spot. Here is three wide. That's not going to work. Ladies and gentlemen, you might want to sort that out. Looks like they do. Fischl! Fischl, three wide on the outside. Is Fischl really going to make that work? I don't think he is. Hadland not giving him a whole lot of room, just barely enough. And down this, and yeah, Fischl backs out of it just a little bit. But Ingrid Hadland having to fend off a three wide run. This is great stuff on the opening couple laps. Cameron Taylor really trying to force his way through. Ohio driver, Kevin Dwyer off and on uh, in the background. Taylor trying to set up Hadeland to take second. Uh, Ingrid not giving him the best line to go through. Uh, Olenek trying to now uh, run down Fischl. Of course, we're still in the uh, early stages of this race. I wouldn't be surprised if Olenek is just kind of settling into a pace back there in that 23 car. Uh, looks like some of the cars a bit further back are already doing so for the most part. Kekin in a bit wide in the last corner. Hadeland getting a big run coming off the final corner. The Lynx racing cars all throughout practice are getting these unreal runs down the, down the front straightaway. Cameron Taylor's got draft off two cars, but he doesn't look like he has anything on the 19 right now, um, at least at the end of the, uh, going down the straightaway. Now he does in the uh, first couple of corners. Um, I would guess that's partially a setup issue, uh, a, kind of a setup thing that what Lynx is doing. Uh, Cameron Taylor again trying to force his way around the outside. Is that going to work? I don't think so. They have to be a brave person to make that work. Not impossible, but uh, it's just not that likely. Uh, Hadland doing a brilliant job so far of um, all throughout this weekend in car 19. Dwyer hanging on, as you see the uh, scoring on the left. Uh, no one's out of the race except for Castaneda, and uh, third gear gone means you're not going anywhere fast. Here's David Krikori in the end of the Los Angeles driver in car number 13. Uh, DK on the inside of Dwyer, pushing the issue a bit too much. He got into got into the 72, and then he got hit by Davenport. Uh, looked like he just lost the front end. That's a big. That's going to be a big blow to uh, to Krikorian because uh, he was one of the dark horses coming into this race, and um, that's going to that's going to put him well down through the order. Here is Su Xiaoyu, um, the uh, car number 80, the driver out of mainland China. Looking, trying to uh, give Daffy Howard a, uh, a uh, trying to harass Howard a little bit there. Not able to really get a good run on Howard. Of course, Sue is um, Sue's team. This is, of course, his third Master Cup start. He's run the past two races, done fairly well in both of them, shown a lot of speed. Um, and now here is another driver, another one of the young drivers to keep an eye on. 
this uh, debut of Kareem Washington, as I mentioned earlier. He's the uh, TM Lights points leader. Uh, third car for the Michelin Suns. This car number 47. Um, definitely keep an eye out for him throughout the day. He, he has been more than ready for this race uh, and to make his debut here. Uh, and I think that's someone, someone not to watch out for today, but in the future, is uh, Kareem Washington. Now here we have Christopher Loxanen in the Tenere. Around he goes. There was a bit of a jam up there with Gaspar D'Souza. A couple other cars. D'Souza went off and back on the track in the 20 car. And is there a problem with the 20? It doesn't look like it. Um, Gaspar D'Souza in the scale TV cars had a, a lot of... Uh, a lot of very brilliant finishes. He's got an issue with that car, I think. Uh, I don't think they're bringing it in, though. Uh, might just be sand on the tire or something. He's going to feel it out. But Gaspar D'Souza having uh, not the best year, but um, given that he was thrown into that car kind of at the last minute, uh, could be a lot worse. As Washington and Sue uh, resuming or starting a battle here. That's a big, big send there by Washington in that 47 car. Here comes Sue. And that's Phil Perpura in the 21 car making his presence known. Oh, contact with Washington. They both hang on to it. Uh, two guys making their debuts, but both of them wildly different. Uh, wildly different individuals. Uh, Perpura, a lot of experience uh, in general. Washington, not much. Not nearly as much. Eklund in the background in that 11 car had an incredible opening lap. Um, as there is Watts as well. But here is Washington again throwing it in. A bit aggressively there. Purpura setting up, trying to get both of them. Is that going to work? Or is he just doing that to get Washington's attention? I uh, think he got Sue's attention. I think that's for certain. As uh, Sue has uh, kind of bailed out of that. As Taylor now beginning to harass Hadland for the uh, lead of the race. Uh, Cameron Taylor being uh, showing a lot of poise right now in that 7 car. Uh, but of course, Ingrid Hadland has been... A very difficult person to pass. Look, Hadland really defending that. Now yeah, that is Hadland really not wanting to surrender that lead, taking a much shallower line. As we see, uh, <laughs> Washington, uh, the level of focus he has is very high. As Taylor trying to get a run on Hadland, but as you see, the Hadland just so much speed down the straights uh, in those and um, in that 19 car. Just was, was, was able to make Taylor's challenge just look laughable. And he, actually, even coming into the Dwyer S, the, the 19 car in particular looking very strong right now. And here is Sue, who as uh, we uh, were just kind of reading earlier, has fallen back. Of course, Washington does use English on the radio, I should point out. Um, but uh, that's some sometimes that's just the easiest way to get or to relay that information to you is through text so we'll do our best in that regards here is Watts in the 61 of course making his comeback here to Cariola after a uh, near career ending injury uh, but Woody Watts having a very strong uh, very strong weekend so far and so far a strong start to his race as Kuznetsov in the 15 doing battle there with Eklund in the 11. That's Tom Moore in the 4. Ryan Matthews in that purple. Black and white 06. And now they have started to catch Watts as someone has kicked a bunch of sand up all over the track. Um, because Nietzsche trying to make this one stick around the outside of Watts. This is going to be for 15th. Watts throwing a block. Sending him wide. That's fair. All is fair in love and war there. <laughs> uh, Normally that would be a bit late for a block because the gold standard is about whether or not a block is too late usually comes down to whether or not you have a wheel on somebody. Is Tom Moore trying to get a run on Kuznetsov? Kuznetsov defending that line. Um, uh, the blocking standards on ovals are slightly different, but generally the rule is regarded to be uh, very similar. Or And then keep in mind when I say rule, that is not a written rule. That is a uh, sort of unwritten rule. Eklund in the background, uh, trying to harass, trying to get that spot for Matthews. That is a very easy car to see, that number 11 car. As Kuznetsov trying to give, um, trying to give, uh, almost gave a bumper a bit to Moore. Uh, Tom Moore in that four car, trying to hold off. Now we're having, now we have Eklund's uh, setter on the camera here. She has absolutely had a, a great start to her career, really. And this is uh, not a race that we were expecting that uh, she would even be in. Of course, uh, she was supposed to be on the other side of the pit wall 
uh, because she was supposed to be on the engineering staff for De for uh, Davina Henton's car. Of course, then after Hen Henton had that injury off track, she ended up taking it over as the driver. She's now in 18th. Matthews off and back on, and uh, Liv Eklund, the uh, has gotten a pair of podiums already in her uh, short career. I wouldn't be as uh, uncharitable as uh, Leonard Roderick is being on the radio there to Tom Moore, but um, that being said, uh, Eklund is definitely making her presence, she's making her presence known with um, a lot of very aggressive moves here. Look how much speed she's gaining at Kuznetsov. Eklund just flying by him like he's barely even there. Jada's got the, that was a huge run. Unbelievable that the, the, the kinds of runs we're seeing out of those cars. And it's not just Eklund doing that too. Reyes also has gotten a... Uh... And in case you're wondering whether or not um, the rival... how much uh, the intra-team rivalry is between how much attention they're paying to it, well, that should tell you enough. More worried about each other, seemingly, than anyone else. Hmm. With Eklund uh, a fair ways back. Oh! Taylor a bit too ambitious to get around Woodard, who was giving him all sorts of room to go. You know, when, when when you're a lap car, the idea is to not move around and uh, you take the leaders by surprise. Woodard did exactly that. But when you're the leader and the lap car is giving you space, you got to take it. I mean, Greg Woodard is known to be one of the more polite drivers, especially when being lapped. But when he's giving you room, you got to take it. Don't understand that from Taylor. Very odd mistake. But uh, it is the lead of the Coriola Grand Prix and it is very early in the race. As we're looking at uh, Apo and Selmy in the, uh, fr that's the first of the Sylvan cars. It's going to take me a while to, really no way to tell these cars apart other than the number. But he's the youngest of the three drivers and the least experienced. He's uh, definitely putting a show on here uh, so far and these cars are getting a fair bit of reactions when they go by. As one of the other ones went off the track in the background and rejoined. Here is Sue in the 80 car who is, um... There's a gap forming between Sue and 11th place as Purpura is having a fit trying to get by him. Um, now, uh, Phil Purpura trying to have a go at him? Uh, or is Sue going to give him a bit of room? Sue Xiaoyu a bit wide. Is he going to finally... That has that battle's been raging on a, for quite a bit. And Sue, I think, finally has decided to uh, relent a little bit. As here is... Reyes in car number 99, quickest car in the speed trap, last time by. Quickest out of anyone. And um, I think she may have had to get off the throttle a bit early there. As there is Yuho Kivala in the 57. That is Rattanen in the 56. Luciano Savarol. Savarol shuts the door. <laughs> that was a bit late, but Luciano doesn't want to be upstaged by a driver who on her second career Master Cup start. And... Um, a lot of outsiders thought was the uh, shoe uh, the shoe in for uh, to take Davina Henton's ride. Tim Ruiz here in the 33, um, trying to make his way forwards. This is a bit further back in the pack. A lot of the cars back here, I think, are just kind of pacing themselves, waiting for uh, the kind of the race to come to them. Uh, I doubt many of these cars are really in any contention to win the race, but to, to steal a big result is definitely on the car. Just three wide may not work here, as that was Cardell that went off in front of Ruiz. Ruiz nowhere to go when Cardell had to rejoin the track, because the racing line does narrow up quite a bit in turn three. I don't know who you can pin that on. I don't know why there's a need to review that. Matthews Motorsports, Carter Fitzgerald rejoining from the pits. Of course, she is all but set to be the second driver at that uh, at this team, especially since um, Atkins missed the race. Uh, Strassenberg, car 29. Unfortunately, that car wounded, and Tessa's more or less just kind of logging laps at the moment, kind of using this race as a test session, which is, again, really unfortunate because Strassenberg, in her debut at the Round of Sweden, looked phenomenal. And um, no, no uh, use of teamwork there to hold anyone up. She's... Um, Letting everyone go, giving them plenty of space. That's what you're. That's what you want out of a lap car. Adrian Devereaux has in car number 74 uh, has been snake bitten here. Of course, he's won everything else there is to win, really, in um, in uh, TM in the TM Master Cup series. He's um, to say he's a titan of the sport is uh, an understatement. He's getting forcing his way on the inside of Greg Woodard. 
Uh, well, not really. Water kind of gave a bit of a uh, bit, a bit of room. That camera angle might be a bit uh, deceptive. Watered again. That is not a good place to catch a lap car. Is the Dwyer S? Because um, it, it does narrow up a bit, but Woodard gave, giving everyone as much space as he can. Because he's they clearly have some kind of problem with the 41, and he's just hanging on for now. If I'm the, if I'm, uh, the 41 team, I pit that car immediately. Because whatever they've got going on, it's not going to be solved by just staying out there. At least not. And we've got another problem with Cardell. Ah, he's slowing. He's been slow for a while, but um, this looks like it's this looks like it's a bit more. Um, that's a puncture, looks like, on the, on the 140 car, so Cardell's definitely going to be bringing that car in. That's unfortunate. That team, the, uh, the Ferdinand team, brought two, uh, two kind of experimental-looking cars, qualified them both, and uh, they're both running into problems early. Um, here is Davenport in the 17 car. He's gotten his way up to fifth. Yeah, um, amidst some of the uh, kind of madness that's gone on in the opening few laps, this is one car we kind of missed. And uh, Davenport really beginning to make his presence known as he starts marching towards the front. Now Cameron Taylor, here's another car that's really picked up a lot of pace in the last few laps. It's this car, number seven. Cameron Taylor making a move on Hadeland for the inside. And the Ohioan recovered from his earlier um, mistake around Woodard. Didn't uh, hurt the car, it looked like, as he's going right around and he's going to take over the lead. Hadeland not fighting it at all as... Um, uh, Cameron Taylor into the lead of the of the Cariola Grand Prix. Looking back now at Kuznetsov and Matthews in cars 15 and 06. This is a battle that's been raging on and off as uh, Matthews uh, goes by uh, the very popular Russian and Selmy in the 58. Luciano going by, and that's Reyes right behind him, right behind Savarol in that. Uh, uh, blue, red, and white, 99 car. What a crossover there. Reyes paying attention. Uh, Kuznetsov, I wonder if they got an issue with the 15. Of course, uh, Reyes is going to be able to... Is she going to try to pick off both of them? No, I didn't think so. Reyes backing out backing out of that one. Good attempt by Alicia Reyes, but um, not much to that there. As we've got Moore now having to deal with Sue, and uh, that's Eklund right there, and, right, and a little hard to see who's behind Eklund. But to be that as it may, that's an easy position made up by Moore. Having a solid weekend so far. He wants points this week. I'm sure he'd like more than that. But, um, of course, in order to uh, win the race, you have to uh, finish first. That's how the old uh, quote goes. A quote that was um, uh, that has been misattributed to uh, Benny Dwyer a hundred times. But, um, of course, it actually came from um, uh, IndyCar racing. Here is... Um, there is more now. He's got Eklund filling his mirrors, and uh, of course they've already been put on alert about the driver of car 11. Matthews in the 06. Looking at him now as he tries to hold off for Tannen. Oh, Vertanen around the outside. Is that going to work? Reyes is going to get them both, I think. Alicia Reyes in the 99 gets both Matthews and Vertanen. And Matthews, is that a crossover from from Ryan Matthews? Is he that he's attempting? Nope, done. Had a bit of a slide there. Caught it. Oh, contact between Matthews and, Ver and uh, Kivala. That's gonna put the 06 off and back on. Now, I don't. I think a driver with less experience would have been that. Matthews knew exactly what to do there. Kept that car on the road, and yes, he's got a little bit of right side damage from uh, contact that you just, you know, contact like that happens, but I think, I think a less experienced driver would not be still running like right now. Because uh, Matthews, what? Some things look, some things are much more, um, much more incredible saves than they appear, and that's certainly a, a case in point of that, as Kareem Washington has gotten around Daffy Howard. Uh, Howard looking uh, to make up some make up some ground here in the double zero car, the double eggs machine. Uh, definitely no ducking and covering, as Moore, Moore went a bit off, Moore went, I think, went off just a little bit, and Eklund is going to be able to pounce on him, and Eklund's going to make that one move stick around the outside. I think Moore... Uh, Moore may not want to fight this if um, uh, if Eklund's been as aggressive as his radio has claimed she is. Um, there she goes. Eklund's going right, is going to be able to get by him, I think. Moore trying to fight it, but uh, Eklund has got a better run down the straightaway. She's going to be able to get him by the breaking zone because, oh, Moore in very deep to try to outbreak Eklund. But that was, that was not a battle I think he was going to win. But he went in just tried to match. 
the pace that Eklund had at the end of that straightaway just wasn't going to work. But Moore gathered it up and prevented that from being a uh, pre pre prevented that from being a crash, basically. Um, as Kekkonen now trying to hold off Fischl for third. As um, that is Davenport lurking in the background in that Royal Purple 17 car. As uh, Fischl is uh, going to have it on Kekkonen here. He's going to have the inside line when they get to the when they get to the next corner. Davenport right behind both of them. Is Kekkonen going to be able to hang on? Oh, Fischl squeezing him out just a little bit uh, in the eight car, uh, trying to stamp his authority a little bit there. As uh, Davenport kind of lurking and waiting in the wings to see what's going to happen here. Uh, Kekkonen sends it in. Davenport sees a hole and he squeaks right in on the inside. That's some he heads up driving by Chris Davenport. Not someone you would have we would have expected that out of five years ago. That's for sure. Davenport, what a uh, paying attention definitely, and uh, he's gone right on by Fischl. Took Fischl I think completely by surprise, uh, and now he's got a good run on Kekkonen. Getting a bit of draft here on the one car. Is Davenport going to make this move fairly late, or is he going to uh, make this one early? Wonder if he's going to leave it late. There, that's Carter Fitzgerald up ahead. She's of no consequence to this battle, or she is on an alternate pit strategy in the 60 car. We'll see how some of these alternate pit strategies play out, as Kekkonen is going to end up losing this one. Kekkonen slid wide there in turn three. He's going to have to let Davenport go by. Davenport shuts the door. Fitzgerald, what are you doing? As uh, Fitzgerald changed lanes a little suddenly. Davenport again with another clean crossover. Uh, I I think Fitzgerald is just trying to not crash that tr crash her own car at this point and just forgot that there's a uh, cars and lead lap coming as this is definitely too early I think this is early maybe not too early we'll have to see how um, everything pans out as far as tire wear is concerned but uh, this feels like it's a bit early lap 13 and now we're seeing uh, that's Cameron Taylor and Adrian Devereaux in the background that are in there's only a couple yellow cars in the field, and uh, they're both pr they're pretty easy to tell apart, let's say. As here is Joel Lennick in car 23, who is continuing to kind of fall backwards, actually, but um, keeping himself in the top 10, which is what he needs to be doing in order to um, well, get the most out of it, get the most out of his opportunity today. The 60 car is coming a bit of an obstacle at this point, and I think Dwyer is already um, voicing his displeasure. I see. Um, Olenek is now trying to set up um, set up a run on the 72. Dwyer bails for the pit lane. He wants no more of that circus. Uh, Sue is in as well in the 80 car, and I think that's Howard back there as well. That's come in. Olenek staying out. Davenport coming in on flap 14. Chris Davenport out of Oakland in. And as you see, um, Rossini in. Some of the cars at the further back down the order. Vanderschmidt in. Kakinen in right behind him in the one. Of course, that is a battle for position. Kakinen not at the tail end of the field. This is a great great opening to start of this race for Chris Davenport. However, this shouldn't really be as much of a surprise as I, um, uh, given how he's been how he's been driving this year. Davenport had a fantastic run going at the Round of France before the car failed. And here is Fitzgerald Eklund. What are you? What live Eklund? And I think that might be what Eklund really giving. Uh, Eklund and Purpura, what a move on Phil Purpura in the 21, both of them really not giving Fitzgerald any time, and Eklund shuts the door! Eklund very late with the defending there. That was almost, that was I think too late up from the Swede, and uh, that might have been what <laughs> what we were hearing about. That was, that was rough. Uh, but here is Scott Stoidler, veteran out of Pennsylvania, getting around Olenek, they're both teammates. Gonna give each other plenty of space, I believe. As uh, yeah, looks like Stoidler is gonna is gonna seed that one to Olenek. Uh, as Eklund really beginning to run both of these cars down now. That 11 car is coming alive, and so is Alicia Reyes in the 99 further back. As the race as the race leaders are in, I believe. Yes, race leader now is Hadland. That's what happens when Cameron Taylor pits, of course. Um, as Cooper having a uh, they're having a bit of a rough day, having to try to get out of their own way. 
and everyone else's. Ah, uh, this two car, that Cooper, that's a battle with, I believe he did, they just gave up a, ba a, a battle with Tessa Strassenberg, and I believe that's for position. I think they may have just gotten the memo that they are actually racing the 29 for position. Contact with Tessa Strassenberg, and yeah, you deserve that one, mate. Ah, uh, Cooper off as the microphone on that camera is having some issues. As Ingrid Hadeland leaves the pits with the lead, it looks like. And there's one car coming. That's Davenport in the 17. He's having a great run. Fischl leaves the pits in the 8. That blue and white car. There is Stoidler in the 26. Washington's Taylor. Eklund go by. One of the uh, one of the Sylvan cars. Pierre, Pierre and Moore. There's Dwyer coming by. He saw the roll. And there's Howard going by Reyes. A bit of, bit of a slow pit stop there. Arto Kekkonen in the one. I think that's a, that's a sign that they had an awful stop there in car number one. The um, uh, Arto Kekkonen and that Gessler crew, not uh, they haven't had too many pit stop errors over the past couple of years. And that's uh, in part why he uh, was able to win this race and the championship last year. Another car with a uh, not so good pit stop was Joe Olenek. Good information to relay to him, but uh, Melenic is going to have a pretty long day ahead of him at this rate because uh, he's now going to have to fight forwards from far back in the field. Here is running order on the left. Adrian Devereaux in that neon yellow 74 going around Tom Moore. Uh, had him at the line. Now he's a solidified 11th. He's going for 10th. Adrian Devereaux, here he comes. Here Pira is giving him space, and Devereaux goes through. The 21 car. Whoa. 21 car Pierre Pira. That car seems to get stronger late in the in the run, and now Devereaux really pulling away from Tom Moore in the four. Moore's car seems to be getting off um, uh, a little bit slower in the uh, early parts of these fuel and tire runs. Now Kekkonen doing battle with two of the Sylvan cars. Uh, Kevel lets him go by. That's for Tan. I'm going to get both uh, his teammate and Kekkonen looks like at the end of the straightaway if Kevel is able or if uh, Vertan is able to keep this run going. I knew I was going to have problems picking, but telling all three of those cars apart. And Selmy is actually ahead of them. So despite the fact that Apo and Selmy is the least experienced of the, of the three Sylvan racing drivers, he seems to be performing the strongest. Whereas Kivala, who is the most experienced of the three by a decent margin, is um, well, currently bringing up the rear. Kekkonen off, and that's gonna he's going to be forced to cede the spot uh, to um, Britannon. Bit of... Um, uh, Finland v. Finland battle here. Kekkonen doesn't want to give it up, though. Here he comes, and uh, squeezing Vertanen out. Not quite going to work. Taro Vertanen really giving Arto Kekkonen a big headache as Kivala, Yuho Kivala, is going to have a run on both of them. Looks like he's made up all that ground that he lost. He's uh, No, he's going to keep in line. He's not going to force the issue here. Uh, as uh, Kekkonen trying to... Um, uh, get as good of a as good of a run off that corner as possible and entering entering the Dwyer S. Excuse me, I'm stumbling over my words right now. Kakinen forced to let Bertan and go doesn't want to risk an accident on lap 18, especially with a car that he is not competing for the championship with. Uh, Sylvan Racing does not run the uh, full schedule. They are going to be here uh, for this race, and uh, that's probably going to be it unless they have another promoter's option lined up. Or as has, or as has been the case in, uh, in years gone by, their prize money is enough to get them to run one of the other special events uh, as well. As here is the battle for, I do believe, sixth between Washington in the 47 and Eklund in the 11. Uh, TM Lights rivals last year, David Krikor in the lap car. Um, DK giving him room and they go by. Washington taking the opportunity. David Krikorian well behaved uh, as a lap car. Uh, Eklund pulling out a bit late. That looked like DK squeezed her down, but he really didn't. I just want to uh, make that very clear. That's that um, that corner is a bit deceptive there. As Eklund gets a bit crossed up, uh, Rossini and Gregorian, I do believe, is uh, a battle for position because uh, that's another car with a that had a disastrous run in the pits. Uh, car number three, Alessandro Rossini, has been kind of uh, been kind of out of it all year, seemingly. Uh, hopefully that turns around because the Italian uh, pretty well liked just having an awful start to the year. Uh, Volpe look a bit off pace this year, don't you think? Anyway, um, 
Eklund uh, gonna have to now fight up a bit, no, a bit further. Here is a, here is Apo and Selmy in the uh, 58 car. He, and now Adrian Devereaux is gonna have to deal with him as uh, he is also trying to hunt down Eklund. As Anselmi's gonna give up the place, I think. I have a feeling he's uh, he's just going to follow the um, gonna follow Devereaux through. But also very inexperienced driver here. But um, very inexperienced driver, but he has a lot of potential. Sylvan Racing is, is uh, uh, hoping that uh, he uh, gets picked up by another team, I think. Or at the very least, that he could springboard them to running uh, the rest of uh, the, uh, at least more races. As you see, uh, the leaders went by. Fischl has gone back to fourth, and Stoidler is going to be all over him. Scott Stoidler is really running Saul Fischl down. That's a battle we're going to have to watch. As uh, Dwyer, there is more. Sue Howard, I think that was Rachel Rainsford. There's Sommerall. Kekin in with uh, Reyes as they've gotten around uh, Keeble, I think. There's Kurt Pliskin. Blue, black, and pink car. That was Ryan Matthews and Chuck Johnson in the brown car. Ashby, the Wilson car. Morgan LeFay still in it. John Dilks in the 68. Then the, uh, the 500 car. The uh, Kanako entry of Giselle Vignon. There is uh, the Christopher Loxon and Tenere, the 107. They had a bit of a struggle getting into the race. Um, had some issues at uh, technical inspection, did Christopher Loxon. Um, but the, uh, the prize money that he's going to get paid, even for just uh, whatever result he's able to get, is going to make this, is going to make it well worth the effort for him, even though, as you see, he is being lapped and the car is wounded. Uh, that's, that's mostly why this race has stayed as relevant as it has. There has been a lot, uh, prize money has been quite extensive, uh, which uh, is why this race not only uh, survived, the, um, survived the end of the Cold War, but also going into the 90s and 2000s. Just uh, sponsors kept piling on, uh, kept uh, piling into the race to um, as you see Davenport there going by locks and without any difficulties. Uh, that's why this race has uh, kept going as strongly as it has, despite uh, the location. Very, not far from the Russian border, actually. Here, as uh, here is, uh, oh, Stoidler gets into official and turns him around! Scott Stoidler, that was a bit aggressive by Stoidler, and I think Fischl shut the door a bit, but Stoidler had a wheel uh, on him. That's the right penalty to make, and a very quick call. Uh, Stoidler had a wheel on, on Fischl, so he's... It can't, so you can't really shut the door on him after that. That's kind of been the golden standard. Uh, is if you have a wheel on somebody, and yeah, I, I, I don't know how you can really justify that one. That was um, a bit over ambitious on Stoidler's part. Fischl's defending the spot, but which he's entitled to do. But um, Stoidler just ran right through him. I don't think there was uh, just much more to that. Uh, it's unfortunate because both those guys are having a real, we're having really strong runs, and I think both could have threatened for the win as we've got problems with the one. Arto Kekkonen's in trouble. That is the worst, worst time for that to happen. He's going to have to limp all the way around the track because he just passed Pit in. Things have gone from bad to worse for Arto Kekkonen. That's definitely, uh, it doesn't look terminal, but uh, it's going to take a while to, for him to be able to get back to the pits. That's for sure. It's definitely going to take him out of contention for the win as we're looking at the 68 car. John Dilks doing battle with Joe Olenek. This, I do believe, is going to be for 28th. If you include uh, Vignon in the 500 car in that as well. John Dilks, a bit of a surprise qualifier. The Team Timothy cars that don't have single lap speed this year, but um, Dilks has been working on making, making that team more and more competitive, and so far he has. Joe Olenek having some uh, a lot of difficulties with the uh, the journeyman out of New Jersey. Uh, John Dilks doing a uh, doing a fine job so far uh, this year. Even though he may not show it on the results sheet, uh, that that 68 team is running has been doing very well. Even though he is the only representative from that team in the race, uh, both his teammates missed the show. Um, Joe Olenek in the 23. Uh, definitely, I think uh, he's getting a bit anxious uh, because. Uh, things just not going his way today. As Woody Watts clears David Krikorian and Phil Purpura. Good, clever use of a back marker by Watts. Um, running solidly in the points. Power Sync Incorporated having a little bit of an off day, uh, looks like. But Watts definitely leading the charge. And granted, some of that off day is not in, is an... Oh! 
Kivala and Reyes uh, doing battle here for, uh, I do believe, 18th or 17th. Um, of course, not all PSI struggles are their own doing. They did win the round of Sweden, but uh, um, not real, uh, but not really the most brilliant of days for them so far. Of course, um, Woodard's difficulties are out of their control as Eklund, whoa, Eklund fading over uh, to throw a block on Adrian Devereaux. And I have a feeling we're going to be hearing a bit more about that maneuver. Um, Devereaux able to go by, but uh, these two had a couple of, had a bit of contact at Road Atlanta. Neither driver had much to say about it at the time. Adrian Devereaux is flying at the moment, but um, uh, needless to say, both were, um, uh, both are, were, have been having strong years so far. Eklund's, we had no one saw coming, uh, but as I've mentioned so many times, but um, Adrian Devereaux setting up his teammate, young Kareem Washington. Uh, Washington, who um, you may have noticed earlier, uh, seemed to be more uh, paying attention to fuel numbers and trying to see where he was in relation to Adrian Devereaux. I have a feeling that's why he's ahead, why he was that far ahead of Devereaux, but also Adrian Devereaux is flying out there right now. He, uh, uh, smart driving, though, by Washington to be thinking more about strategy as we have a battle for the lead ongoing here. These are two possibly different fuel strategies here that could be playing out. The one that Ingrid Hadeland is running and the one Davenport is because they are um, staggered by quite a few lapses. Ingrid Hadeland trying to uh, fade over on Davenport, but Chris Davenport is not blinking on that. Cameron Taylor way in the background. Davenport is definitely uh, having a bit of a coming out party today. He's been in the series for a while, but uh, up, in, uh, up until this year, uh, his, his results have been kind of mixed and all over the place. Um, uh, he's he's long long since evolved from his um, uh, from his uh, first couple of years in the series. Here is Vincenzo Focciato, the very likable Italian, who's been uh, running for FIAM for a while. One of many drivers who uh, I think is uh, not only auditioning for a good ride, but uh, for a better I should say a full time ride or a more regular ride than the one he's got. Uh, the only FIAM in the race. He's bringing it in. Uh oh, that's not uh, that's not assuring. I hope that's not terminal, because if it is, that's going to end what's been a pretty strong day. He's running in 29th, but, uh, oh boy. Hopefully they can get that sorted out, but uh, if not, that's an unfortunate end of the day for Fochisato. Um, as here is Hadeland trying to hunt down Davenport in trying to take the lead back from him. Uh, Hadeland trying to peek inside. No, no go on Davenport. There's not not close enough to him. To him. Definitely showing him, um, trying to uh, get in Davenport's head a bit. But Chris Davenport looks pretty laser focused today. Uh, Hadeland may be uh, backing off now a little bit. Here comes Cameron Taylor in car number seven, trying to uh, make a run at second here. Uh, Taylor uh, coming on inside. Here he comes. Uh, Ingrid Hadland's not going to fight that one. Uh, we're going to see if uh, we get any big runs down the front straightaways here. But uh, Cameron Taylor looks like he's pulling away a bit. Uh, I don't think there's anything to worry about with the 19 because, there, as I mentioned, there are alternate fuel strategies here. Here's Washington in the 47. That is Eklund right behind him in that uh, 11, in the 11 car. Oh, Eklund almost lays into his right rear. Uh, Liv Eklund has been very, very aggressive with some of the overtakes and defending today. Uh, may not be making too many friends, but uh, that was um, uh, that was cutting it close. Fischl trying to fight back in car number eight. The rookie points leader. Youngest driver in the race. Um, won earlier in the year at Carbondale. Still, um, uh, he's had a couple of off-track incidents, but he's... Uh, uh, he's been uh, uh, having a, a bit of a rough time here in in, uh, in Europe, but he's still maintaining his points lead, which is what he has to do. Of course, he's got a couple of top tens, and the only time he hasn't been, the only times he hasn't been in the top ten this year, when he's had problems. So that pretty much just means, oh, Gaspar D'Souza, oh, heart attack right there almost in car number twenty. Oh, uh, that was that looks sketchy. He's got a definite problem with that car, and he's probably been wrestling with it all day. Oh, that, look, that could have been a big accident, but that was a big catch by the Portuguese veteran. 
D'Souza out of the Azores. Here is Cameron Taylor in car number seven, trying to hunt down Chris Davenport as he goes by Darren Cardell in the 140, who has gotten that car back going. Uh, good to see Cardell still running. Hopefully that team gets a better run with those cars sometime soon. Here is Tom Moore in car number four, out trying to deal with and sell me and trying to go after Sue in the 80 car. Kind of gone back and forth on the uh, name ordering, you may have noticed, between Su reading it as uh, Shao Yu Su or Su Shao Yu. Um, the, uh, the driver himself has uh, just said, has uh, instructed us basically to uh, just get it right, whatever, and whatever that means in either in your way or in mine. So, um, we will hopefully honor that request as best we can. As here comes uh, uh, Saul Fischl trying to run the outside of Anselmi. Anselmi runs him wide a bit. <laughs> Not very nice there. As here comes Daffy Howard around both of them. Oh, I think there is going to be... Ah, uh, that's a bit uh, trigger happy, don't, don't you think? Well, anyways... Uh, and sell me trying to get the place back now from Howard a bit of contact That's not where you want to be touching um, or, Around there because that could be a big big accident, but the uh, uh, Neither driver here with a lot of experience look at has got a great run going into the first corner Around uh, trying to get on the inside of Howard uh, Daffy Howard no relation to former champion Joseph Howard, but he's certainly got the heart of a champion with the way he's driving as here is uh, Tom Moore in the four and Sue in the 80. Oh, he goes off track, hangs on to it. Good, dr good driving so far by the um, Chinese uh, driver. Here is Giselle Vignon in the pits on lap 25. Don't know if that's scheduled or not. Uh, there, it looks like it. Looks like a scheduled pit stop for the Kanako team. Interesting call there. We'll see how this goes as I do believe the 26 car of Stoidler has already been in again and um, Well, he's had a bit of a um, He's had a bit of an interesting day already It's not getting any better as as Cameron Taylor pits the seven car Adrian Devereaux also in in car number 74 to kick off another round of pit stops here on lap uh, going in lap 26 Battle for 26th place here between John Dilks in the 68 and Yevgeny Kuznetsov in the white, blue, and red 15 car. Kuznetsov will be running in front of his home crowd next race out. John Dilks uh, is always swinging a bit wide. They're both a bit wide. Kuznetsov into the back of him, hooks him by the right rear, and around he goes. Oh, Kuzi, that wasn't on, buddy. That uh, wasn't right. Uh, John Dilks just got... Ugh. John Dilks just got turned by Kuznetsov. Just, I think he just lost Kuznetsov just lost the front end of that car and washed out into the 68. But uh, a definitely avoidable contact as Kevin Dwyer's best friend is getting in his way as Tom Moore goes by, gives a bit of a swipe to the 60 car. I have a feeling Tom Moore may feel likewise about Fitzgerald. And uh, ooh, all right then. Not happy, I see. As uh, here is Eklund and and Washington resuming their battle from earlier. Uh, Liv Eklund peeking on the inside. Oh, gets into his right rear again. And Eklund goes by. She's running them a bit wide now. Oh, and she... Eklund is really feisty out there today. And it is a joy to watch as uh, she clears Washington and is trying to pull away from him. Davenport in in the 17. John Dilks is in as well in the background trying to uh, uh, repair damages. Kuznetsov is leaving the pit lane in car number 15. I think the 68 just went straight behind the wall. Uh, it's an unfortunate way for John Dilks' race to end as this battle now resuming. Dwyer in in the 72. Tom Moore pulling out on Washington as he's trying to get a good run on Eklund, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, here he's going to have to play defense here. Moore coming in on the inside. Tom Moore in the four. And he is uh, going to try to get Washington through uh, the first couple of turns here. He's going to be able to do that, I think. Yep, there he goes. Moore in the four. Up to, up to uh, well, uh, actually position four. Hey, as now he's trying to get Eklund. Eklund defending in the 11. Going to see... If he's going to be able to throw that on the inside, make it stick, no. Not able to make it work this time. 
as uh, Eklund trying to uh, extend her advantage on Moore, but she's going to have to deal with Feldhofer in the gray car up ahead. Well, Tom Moore having a fantastic season so far. Got his uh, first win. I mentioned Volpe a bit off the pace this year, but uh, uh, that that's not to say that Tom Moore isn't having a strong year as Joe Olenek. Big scare in uh, the Kalela turn. That uh, They've got a... Oh, no. Is Joe... Is, just, does Olenek have a problem here? It looks like he does, and he passed pit entry. Well, if Arto Kakinen can have a problem and also and miss pit entry is like that, uh, I think Joe Olenek decided, well, uh, that's misery loves company, but unlike uh, Kakinen, Joe Olenek will be walking out of this race with at least 10 points, and that's all just from winning the pole. Uh, Tom Moore having a run on Eklund coming down the front straightaway. Uh, is now is he going to be able to get around the Swede, or is she going to make his life difficult? As and I think she is. Uh, but at the same time, they're going to have trouble with lap cars up ahead. But they are doing battle for position. Eklund's not able to fight that. Tom Moore is going to go by. Uh, he's going to get jammed up by uh, Kuznetsov and Woodard. Uh, that's not for position anymore. As um. I wonder if Kuznetsov's gotten the memo yet. Eklund trying to peek out there, but uh, got the 15 and the 41 kind of getting in the way. I think Kuznetsov got the memo. Uh, I think he got the memo, so he dropped off. Here is Hadland in car number 19, who's reassumed the lead of the race now that Davenport has hit the pit lane, and here she comes in. Well, here we go. Uh... This is uh, this divergent pit strategy is going to be uh, pretty interesting to watch. That's not staggered by as much this time. Uh, as you see, more staying out. Eklund is in in the background. I could see the car number 11 coming in. As here is Fischl is in, along with Rachel Rainsford in the white car and uh, Kareem Washington. Rachel Rainsford's kept herself um, uh, in contention here, not really to win this thing, but just get a good hunk of points, even though she is just the third driver. Uh, there is Davenport, waiting for third. And waiting, now where is Anselmi? That's David Krikor, and he's no factor, that's, that car's not enough factor either. There's Cameron Taylor, Taylor third, there's Eklund fourth. Where is the 58 car? There is Rachel Rainsford, there's Sue. And there, there goes Washington, Savarall. There's Dwyer Reyes in there as well. I think we may have lost track of the 58 car. Oh, no, there he is. There he is. Eh, there he is. Uh, there he is up on Selmy. Uh, we were wondering where this car went because I kind of lost track of it. But um, uh, he's having a very good day for himself. And it looks like the pace he's showing, especially late in these runs, could set him up for a possible top five here. And uh, that is, I think that's why he didn't pit, he hadn't pitted yet. There's Strassenberg right in front of him, the 29 cart. Strassenberg well out of it. Uh, she's a couple of laps down. There is uh, Ingrid Hadland and Chris Davenport. The battle for the lead again kicking off. Uh, pitting later appears to be, uh, appears to be doing quite well. But then, of course, um, uh, getting tires up to getting tires up to speed apparently is uh, taking quite a while and that is getting heat in the tires getting pressures up to where they're optimal is taking a bit of time and that is where uh, Davenport who's already had a couple laps on them is able to make up ground however the uh, the uh, reverse of that of course is late in the fuel run uh, Hadland might have a cleaner track in front of her and here is Luciano Sabral in the five uh, doing battle with uh, Woody Watts uh, and Daffy Howard and Arto Kekkonen, who's just decided to get in the way a little bit. As now we're looking at the 61 of Watts. Did he have con No, no contact with Kekkonen there in the one. But uh, Woody Watts continuing to impress. Oh, almost into the back of Howard. And there comes Kekkonen around the outside. Kekkonen just kind of running his own race at this point. But uh, he is kind of interfering a bit. Um... He will be shown the blue flags if he's an impediment, but uh, a little hard to argue that he is because he's faster than them, and that's what makes the blue flag rules in this series um, a bit hairy, is specifically because there are slightly different rules if it is whether or not they're lap cars doing battle for position, which I think is rational. However, when you have a, when you have a, a car that's a lap down like Arto Kekkonen, who's also faster, that's when things get... Um, 
can get a bit uh, can get a bit messy. Um, especially since there there are other cars out there that he is racing against, so he can make an argument for that. But we'll see how that goes over. In if the stewards want to have a talk with him as uh, Savarol there goes on by. Here is the running order on the left as Tom Moore trying to hold off Taylor and Selmy has gotten his way around Eklund in the uh, 58 car. Apo and Selmy could be the star of the day if the even if he's not able to win the race because this is an impressive debut. Uh, going back to the field, the battle between Ashby and Dave Wilson has also been heating up a little bit. We're uh, sorry we're not able to follow that as much as um, as much as we're able to. Is Kekin and his uh, actually no Kekin is being uh, is a lap behind everybody else. So uh, kind of take back some of those statements earlier as uh, Taylor able to hang on there. Dwyer and Kivala doing battle here for ninth. That is Rachel Rainsford back there in the 40. As Rachel swings inside, is that going to work? No. No, it is not. <laughs> no, not going to be able to get Dwyer. Going to be able to get Kivala. There's Devereaux in the background in the 74. But Dwyer having a... Um, for someone who's only running a couple of races, Kevin Dwyer is going to be uh, going to be looking pretty good. Of course, he will be... Um, after this race, he is uh, going back to the United States to get ready for um, the Indianapolis 500, where he will be uh, taking part. Of course, he is... Having a barnstorming here this year is Kevin Dwyer. And um, of course, after Indy, his next big race will be, uh, I do believe he'll be running at Le Mans. So that'll be, that should be interesting to keep tabs on as Sue trying to make um, something of Eklund uh, here, but he's not able to do so. Sue in this 80 car having, uh, really turning the pressure up on the Swede, but Eklund is not, is not backing down. There's been some criticisms uh, around about Sue's racecraft uh, in the in the past uh, recent past but uh, I honestly with a pass like that um, as clean as that was I find those a little hard to I find that uh, point a little hard to argue um, despite his very limited uh, actual racing experience as Kivala or sorry that is at Selmy doing battle with Moore and going through the Dwyer S oh oh and Selmy all sorts of sideways and Moore is gonna hang on in the four yeah, that's a good that's a good move there buddy as Chris Davenport continues to lead the way in car number 17 uh, he is kind of in his own zip code a little bit uh, the 19 has fallen back a little bit uh, now here we have Kekkonen and Eklund this is not a battle for position this is a battle of ego apparently because Kekkonen is going uh, goes right on by Eklund doesn't fight him um, oh was that contact I think he might have gotten into the back of the 80 car of Sue. And Eklund now is going to be able to get uh, to... Um... Oh, is Eklund going to throw that in there? Yes, she does. Sue is paying attention. He was watching. Doing a fantastic bit of... Uh, fantastic bit of driving there by Sue to not only see Eklund coming, but also to not cause an even bigger accident with himself and Kekkonen. Is he going to cede this place and let them both go? If so, Eklund's going to be able to make a pass here around the outside. No, Eklund's way off. Way off as Kekkonen shoves her off the track. Oh, boy. That's good. This is going to create some controversy here, isn't it? Because the car number one is very, very fast out there, and he is, he is definitely creating havoc out there. So, uh, Arto Kekkonen choosing chaos today as... Uh, uh, not, as not much has gone his way uh, after about lap five. And here is Sue taking another run at Eklund down the front straightaway. Eklund on the curbs. That's going to impact her speed down the front straightaway. Here comes Sue alongside. I think he's going to be able to get this pass clear, but he's got to also be braver than Eklund into turn one. And there they go. As Sue is able to take that position. Is he able to clear Eklund? Yes, he is. So, shall you sue as, oh, he goes a bit wide. Oh, that's, uh, that's not advised. Eklund's gonna pounce on that and she does take the place back and gains a bit more ground from it. Whoops, as here is Kuznetsov in car number 15. He's coming in, in that car. I see Ashby is also into the pits already in the 55 and so is Vignon in the 500. Uh, so we'll see where they come out because Nietzsche up trying to overcome um, that penalty that he's been assessed. As Tom Moore trying to hold off that uh, the 58 car event. Selmy coming on Patrick Feldhofer. 
And Selmy's having a fantastic race so far. Um, and that uh, 58 car has Feldhofer, not really where you want to be. Uh, wrong place to be, but uh, making the most of it. I think he's just trying to hang on to that car, honestly, because Patrick Feldhofer not ha not having a um, not having the world's best debut. But then again, uh, when you get into an accident in the opening lap, it's going to be a pretty long race regardless. Um, those are a couple of uh, kind of experimental Gesslers that uh, the that team has, and it's a shame they both ran into trouble early, but. Uh, I'd be surprised if they didn't get at least another promoter's option before the European Tour is over. As Daffy Howard running in 13th, he's got an issue. Does, it, does he have a problem? Yes, he does. Definitely does. He's waving everyone to go by. So the uh, car double eggs is going to drop way down the order. And uh, well, that's three cars that have had problems on the front straightaway. Uh, we'll see if Howard's able to get back in it because uh, hopefully that won't result him in being uh, counted out for good today. Uh, as uh, Moore trying to hang on to, hang on to the place from, to hang on to fourth, oh, contact with Feldhofer. I think uh, Feldhofer just trying to nurse that thing to the end because that thing was stepping out on him, I think. As Anselmi's able to clear the 187 and set up Moore as well. Oh, there he goes, uh, Apo Anselmi coming on the, he's gonna make this move on the outside. Up on Selmy, getting it done in car 58. Doesn't have Moore cleared yet. Moore's going to have the inside line, though, over here. Uh, is he going to be able to? No, doesn't look like it. Uh, and Selmy's not exactly clearing a big slide from the fin at the back of the 58. And it's taking him a while to clear Tom Moore, who is hanging on here and fighting back in that car number four. Um... Uh, Eklund be trying to reel these two in while this battle's going on. More a bit wide. Uh, keep it off. He's going to get it on the grass a little bit. Hopefully, he uh, doesn't get too much grass on the tires. As here is Cameron Taylor on Hadalan for what's going to be second place. Good run from the Ohio drivers so far. Both of them still in contention to win this thing. Um, definitely, this is a... Um, uh, both of them uh, in it with a shot to win it. As Vignon tries to keep the Kanako on track. They've been having handling problems all race long, it looks like, with that, uh, with the Serpent. As Hadalan trying to set in, settle in a little bit. As Sue pits the 80 car and Dwyer pits the 72. Chris Davenport, we uh, just saw the message there. He's on his way in, in the 17 car. We're gonna see where Davenport cycles out in um, the Aerotel machine. Gaspar D'Souza on the 20 is in, the KLTV right. Scott Bates going by as well in the in that black car. I just heard him go by. Cameron Taylor is in, in the seven. So there, uh, so this is gonna really, um, uh, this should really uh, kind of set the tone here because Hadland is now got to put in some really strong laps, which she's shown she's able to do but um, it just got to be enough to overcome that advantage that Chris Davenport has. Eklund running down more now as she's able to get around him. And I've noticed that's in Selmy. He's not able, he really hasn't been able to get to really get much ground on. Oh, is Eklund going to get him too? Apple and Selmy has not really been able to get away from Tom Moore as much. And Eklund's going to get both of them. And uh, around, he's going to take him around the outside. And Eklund clears the uh, 58 car. So Liv Eklund really stamping some, uh, really asserting her authority in this race. As you saw Woody Watts in the 61 hit the pits. Saul Fischel in car number eight has recovered a little bit. He is uh, being scored in seventh. However, we'll uh, wait to see where um, where he is when uh, everything cycles out. Uh, is chasing down the uh, 57 car. Yuho Kivala comes out right behind Gaspar D'Souza. I'm not sure he intended to do that. I think he was trying to get some draft off the 20, but um, just closed on him so quickly. I think D'Souza was expecting him to go by. Um, Jasper D'Souza just kind of uh, nursing that car today. He's going to get a good paycheck out of today, though. Carter Fitzgerald in the 60 car has been... Well, can, she's continuing to not make many friends here. Luciano Savarol and Evgeny Kuznetsov um, there, and uh, I think... Uh, well, Savarol is going to clear the 15, but that's not really a battle for position, I don't think. So, no, it's not because uh, the penalty that Kuznetsov has. But Fitzgerald um, showing some decent pace. However, um, not exactly making many friends out there. As uh, here we see the uh, car number 15. 
because uh, the Etsov are uh, trying to uh, get behind, get, oh, big off there, as there goes the 21 from Kura, uh, right on by him, and that car has fallen back a little bit, I've noticed. Now here is Adland, again, all by herself. Yeah, there you can see it. there's not much going on. Fastest lap of the race, Ingrid Hadland, that time by. She is really belting out, basically qualifying laps at this point. And here is another car, two other cars that have kind of heated up a battle that uh, uh, has kind of, that hasn't really had much going on for a while. That is Alicia Reyes in the number 99 and Rachel Rainsford in the 40. As now we're looking at, uh, this is a replay here, something happened with Cardell. As, oh, Krikorian got into him in the 13. I don't think that's going to be... I, I could see a penalty being laid there for, uh, for avoidable contact, but uh, I'm not sure that that's going to happen because Cardell was... Um, uh, they could make an argument. They could definitely protest that as not, be, as, um, uh, not being uh, at least uh, avoidable contact. I don't know how, as you see the leaders come in, but... Um, it's definitely possible if um, an incident in the Team Europe race is to be understood as Eklund is in. I think that was Washington in and Fischl is in. I think I saw Washington come in in the 47 car. Fischl's been having a, a good recovery drive. As here we see, um, there is Hadland returning to the track. Where is Davenport? Where is the 17? There he is, Chris Davenport. All right, now we're waiting for Cameron Taylor. And I do believe we're also going to be waiting for Anselmi, but he's probably still out there, I think. And was Strassenberg that went by in the white car. There's Taylor. There's Eklund. Eklund's gaining a lot of ground in that yellow number 11 car. The yellow, blue, and red 11 is moving up. And now Eklund is definitely inserting herself into the battle for a podium place, as here is Fischl leaving the pits, and he's going to be right with Sue. Now, there is, um, there has been some controversy about some issues regarding what flag we see. Oh, contact Rachel Rainsford and uh, Alicia Reyes. Now, uh, what I was uh, mentioning earlier uh, is, uh, uh, oh, Ra Rachel Rainsford might have a good run here around the outside of um, Reyes. Uh, Reyes throws it in. And that's not going to quite stick as Rachel is going to have another shot, sliding the rear end just a little bit. But uh, Reyes is going to be able to clear. Rachel looks like they're coming on Ian Cooper, and they're having a dismal race. Um, and Reyes now closing in on the uh, two car. See if they're uh, watching the blue flags. Sometimes uh, they tend to be a pretty well-behaved back marker. That is, that's uh, that seems to be the case. Anyways, what I was mentioning with Saul Fischl earlier was, um, or what I was going to mention, was that there was uh, some talk that Saul Fischl might change the, uh, the flag that shows up on his, uh, on the Chirons that we have. As uh, you see Tom Moore, uh, Apo and Selmy entering the pit lane, along with, oh, that's Strassenberg and one of the other uh, Sylvan cars on the Chirons. He shows him as American. There has been some talk that he will uh, make an attempt to change his registration to Israeli. Uh, it's silly if you ask me, but um, especially because of uh, the reasons behind that. But um, uh, I hope he knows there's many different ways to show... Uh, oh, whoa! Hadland way off the track there. Um, as Davenport really is going to gain a lot of ground here. That could have been a big mistake there. That could. This is for the lead of the Cariola Grand Prix. And uh, the time's winding down here. Davenport sticks his nose in. Adeland not giving an inch. Uh, it's taken Davenport quite a while to catch up to Ingrid Hadeland. Um, uh, and of course, Hadeland, uh, something I failed to mention during the round of Sweden was that uh, the location of the track is actually closer to Ingrid Hadeland's uh, uh, place of birth in Liv Eklund's as Davenport uh, going by on get, going by before they even get to the Dwyer S. Oh, that was that was aggressive there. But uh, that's the type of move you need to make over there. Um, as here is Kivala in car number 57. Uh, ahead of Eklund in the 11. And uh, Yuho Kivala having a pretty good race so far. He's uh, 
say he's thrown the dice a bit with strategy would be an understatement, but uh, Sylvan Racing uh, definitely trying to get him uh, get him a good result here after he's done fairly well here in the past few years. Uh, he's been, of course, bounced around. He's, he's been a journeyman in the series. Uh, made his rookie, uh, made his debut in 2015. Uh, good to see him continue to perform, uh, just, even though this was uh, seemingly the only tracker he seemed to run well at consistently. Um, here is Adrian Devereaux, who's fallen back down the order a little bit in the 74 car. That is Dwyer right with him. Arto Kekkonen in the one is still is honestly one of the fastest cars in the racetrack. Uh, but he is, as you can see here. Not exactly, uh, not exactly being uh, very helpful. Of course, uh, Kevin Dwyer is a teammate to Kekkonen, so there might be some interest there. As you see the running order on the left, this is the battle for fifth. Uh, Eklund uh, poking your nose on the inside of Moore. Um, Tom Moore skating it a bit wide. Is Eklund going to be able to get this one done before um, they get to the uh, Kalela corner. No, doesn't look like he's going to have to make this one work on the outside. Or maybe even get by him in the straight, which she does. Wow! The Eklund that gets that one done on the outside, going down the straightaway, which you don't, you don't see passes like that happen here. You normally see a lot of moves under braking or... Um, uh, but we're seeing some passes from, that, from some of the Lynx cars in a straight in the straightaways and of course when i say lynx racing i am including the lnx car which of course uh that is the alicia reyes 99 car and um uh, i am including that car with uh lynx racing for um reasons that will not exactly endear me to um uh lynx racing or lnx at all there is Alicia Reyes. Of course, LNX Racing is the registration that Lynx has used to run the uh, Gravis City races at because uh, Lynx, the company, is, um, uh, they, they have uh, had a lot of issues being able to uh, get approval to run over there in uh, years past. They've had to use the LNX Racing banner, which the series kind of helped put together as Kekkonen continuing to make life difficult for everyone else. As you saw Kareem Washington able to take uh, the place away from Reyes. Davenport now going around Kuznetsov. It's not really a battle here. Kuznetsov isn't really fighting to stay in the lead lap. As um, yeah, Kuznetsov uh, kind of yields that. Davenport continuing to have a fantastic race today. Sue in again. This is, is this is, seems a bit early um, for Sue. Uh, someone else is coming in the background. That's Kakinen, I think. Red car. So I think it must be. Here's Devereaux and Washington doing battle. That is Fitzgerald in the 60. Well, Adrian Devereaux is going to get a great run down the, fr down the front straightaway here. Even though Washington has some drafting help with Rachel Rainsford in the 40, Devereaux got a great run off the last corner. He might be able to get both of them, and he's definitely setting himself up to. Rachel gives him the spot, and there he goes. Vignon in the 500 car. Coming out of the pits in uh, right in front of Scott Bates in the six. Um, Vignon having kind of an anonymous race so far, which, you know, for... Whoa! Scott Bates gets into the back of her and turns them both around. Uh, that's not... I don't know. I don't think that, were, that one was uh, called for. Scott Bates closed on the 500 car so fast. Uh, I almost wonder if Vignon's got problems. That'll almost definitely be a penalty thrown at the six for that. I'm um, positive. Uh, I'm a little positive on that, but uh, we'll have to see. That one might be reviewed after the race. Is Eklund trying to take this position away from Anselmi? This will be fourth as Anselmi. Do you want to talk about a good coming out party? Uh, Apo Anselmi is definitely... Whoa! Eklund a bit. A Eklund, that car was squirrely under under braking. And Selmy's having a fantastic coming out party today. Because um, this is a great debut for him. As here is Kurt Pliskin in 16th. Fresh off a win at the round of Sweden. Uh, having Following that up with a uh, fairly solid run. What he needs is more points and he's getting them. I think, of course, he'd rather be much higher up than where he is. But... Um, uh, this is a double points event, so that's going to, uh, of course, that's going to really impact him a lot. His uh, title hopes a lot if he's able to get a, a really big result here today. 
which saw Fischl in the eight is, uh, oh, he might not get a, uh, the result he was looking for coming into today, but he's definitely going to be uh, in the points of the way he's running right now as he dusts off Reyes. And uh, uh, that's, fit what is Fitz oh, Fitzgerald going around Cardell? I think Cardell waved um, the 60 by, but that is, yeah, I'm not surprised. That's the uh, Fitzgerald side. That seemed a little, uh, Fitzgerald's, I think, needed something to, um, wake her up there, I think. Uh, as Davenport into the pits from the lead of the race. And I think that's Taylor in the background. I think th these two cars have been in lockstep on their strategy. Yes, it is. Whether or not that's going to result in a win remains to be seen, but it definitely looks like this is, uh, kind of narrowing into a bit of a two-horse race. Chris Davenport and Ingrid Hadeland have uh, kind of uh, been the yardsticks that everyone's gauged themselves to. And now it's time for Hadeland to put in some really big banker laps in order to try to clear Davenport by as wide a margin as possible. He's also uh, two drivers that I don't think too many people would have been hedging their bets on, even though um, uh, both have performed very well here in, um, in the past. At least Hadeland has in, oh, as Eklund Really uh, roughing up, or trying to rough up and sell me here. Two drivers without a whole lot of experience managing to do that just fine through these first couple of corners. But, um, yeah, I, I, was, I have the, the feeling that uh, Hadeland may have been a bit underestimated in her um, uh, in her efforts today coming uh, before this race. And here is Morgan Le Fay, who is solidly in the points in the World Soft Car. Lefay has kind of been uh, regular in the European events and has also run a couple of the Canadian rounds as well in years gone by. Um, running 15th, that's a pretty good effort considering Lefay is, um, of course, not a series regular. Here he is, Cameron Taylor in car number 7. Get, um, losing that place to Savarall in the 5. Has Taylor got a problem here? Looked a bit slow going through the, uh, going through Mallet as, um, Savarall in the five got an excellent run going coming down the front straightaway, but uh, here he is in car number five going around Strassenberg and Howard, both of whom are a bit further down the order and not really uh, of any threat to Luciano. Of course, the Brazilian has been um, has performed very well here in your in in the past as well. It's not not entirely a surprise to see him fight. Um, get a fighting up through the field to get a big result as Davenport's now got some pressure from one of his teammates that is Kareem Washington uh, Washington inside oh what that was a bit I, I can understand a bit of anxiety for Davenport shut the door but I, I don't think you should don't do that in a teammate uh, Washington's on a different strategy than than Davenport is but uh, I have a feeling there's some communication issues going down between the Mitchell cars Davenport trying to get by Washington now uh, not exactly helping each other out, which is a bit of a surprise. Normally, uh, ugh, not ha that's not going to help Davenport's efforts if he's going to try to chase Adland down again. Um, that's that's for sure. Washington holding him off, and that's uh, how I guess that's going to unfold. Is there is the running order on the left? Um, you see Adland and Eklund one two for Lynx Racing. Their last win, remember, was here. And that was also a 1-2 result. As you see, Zelda Ashby doing battle here with Chuck Johnson for 23rd. Johnson has been having a good a good quiet run today. We haven't really talked about either one of these two that much. And um, that's honestly, I think, does that does their efforts a bit of a misservice as, as uh, Johnson goes off and on the track again. That's a bit of a shame, but uh, sometimes, it, sometimes it's how it, uh, it unfolds, where you have good, solid runs... Uh, even though uh, not exactly capturing any headlights or uh, any uh, highlights, excuse me, by doing so. I don't know where I got that from. As we got two more of the Sylvan cars doing battle, um, going down the front straightaway, of course, and Selmy and Kivala, who has recovered uh, quite admirably in the 57 car, showing um, uh, showing off what he's got here. Uh, as uh, uh, and Selmy trying to hang on as best he can. Uh, white wheels tell those cars apart however the numbers do that a lot do a much better job of doing that as you see front on there's nothing to tell them apart as i thought anselmi may have had a problem there had a bit of a wiggle but um yeah, nothing wrong there is fischl now hounding davenport is davenport have an issue now 
I wonder, because he's being reeled in by Saul Fischel here in that uh, that car number eight. But uh, Fischel has also picked it up quite substantially since um, the Stoidler incident. Um, he's trying to get a run on Davenport, and uh, this is this is a way to recover, certainly, if you have some early adversity in a race like this, if you're Fischel. But Davenport's also got to make sure... Oh, Davenport's going wide. Oh, Fischel squeezing him out of it. But for Davenport, you have to try to minimize any errors you, uh, you make, and you have to focus on um, running down Ingrid Hadeland, uh, which, um, the way things are going, this is looking very rosy for the Ingrid Hadeland camp. As here is Savaral in the five, going around Kuznetsov, who is a lap down. Luciano, what are you doing, mate? That was completely unnecessary, and I'm at a loss for words. Kuznetsov's giving you all the room in the world to go by. Uh, at some point, you, at, well, I'm bored here with the 15. At that point, you've cleared him. What are you doing by continuing to move over on him? Savaral was running in 12th place, and he just kind of threw that away by roughing up a lap car for no reason. Yes, I know Kuznetsov already has a penalty and an invitation to the steward's office for uh, some of his driving earlier. That's not on him. I don't know what... Uh, I don't understand the logic of just running him off the track. He's... What's he going to do? Like, what good does that do you? Don't understand it. Yes, we're looking at Morgan Le Fay in the 49, who is in front of Cameron Taylor. Here is uh, Darren Cardell in the 140, who has had a um, adventure today. Oh! Now, pay, that's a case where you should be paying a bit more attention. Maybe that's why he's had an adventure today. Just kind of ran in, uh, kind of ran over Matthews there. Same time, you could say Matthews could have avoided that, but uh, at the same time, that's uh, that's uh, not a good incident. Definitely not, especially when you're as far down the order as Cardell is. You see Eklund hitting the pits. Looking now at Kivala and Chuck Johnson, uh, these are not the same pit strategy. Johnson well down the order, lets him go, no problem. Washington is in in the, in the 47. That is Fischl in the 8 car that has come in as well. Ingrid Hadeland in car number 19. Things are looking very, very good for Ingrid Hadeland. We'll see what Davenport, of what Davenport has been able to do. In the meantime, as Ingrid pits the 19, there she goes. Where is Davenport? Where is the Aratel Colton Morel Mizar? That is not him. That was Wilson. There he is. Davenport's lost a bit of ground, I think. That was um, the 500 Vignon. That's Rossini. That's Fitzgerald. Where is Cameron Taylor? And furthermore, where is Eklund? That was Feldhofer. That's Cooper in the two car. This is looking fair. There is D'Souza. There's Cameron Taylor. So there is Eklund, and there is, I do believe, Anselmi. So this is... Very much looking like a two-horse race. Hadeland and Davenport, and very slow off the last corner. Hadeland had to catch that, and Davenport is going to have a big run down the front straightaway. With not uh, this race is winding down, and we'll get we got have to see now how if Davenport's able to make it to the end on this tank of fuel, and whether or not Hadeland is, because that is definitely becoming a bit of a concern here. I'm pretty sure Davenport won't. However, we don't know if Hadeland will. Hadeland off the track. Is she pacing herself? Uh, what is... Uh, here is uh, Kivala. That's 57 car. Uh, he is now merged from the pits in that, in that car. See what he's able to do with time winding down uh, in this race. As he's trying to hold off Taylor, who is mounting a charge in the seven. I have a feeling Taylor and Davenport will not make it to the end on fuel. There's too many laps left. However, we don't know about some of the other cars, and honestly, it looks a bit doubtful. I think everyone's going to have to pit again. Here is uh, Taylor again. 
making uh, some ground. As you see, the lap car of D'Souza's got a run on Kivala. I think Kivala is either in fuel sa he's either in full fuel saving or he's got some issues. As uh, we're now looking from the gopher camera, scoring on the left. There is, there goes Reyes. Here is, that is Fischl coming by. And uh, Perpira, Kekin in there, Devereaux in there. I'm hearing a lot of cars that aren't riding as high a revs they were earlier in the race. And I have a feeling that is something to do with uh, everyone's uh, fuel strategy here. But also, uh, given just the nature of this track, I'm uh, not gonna be at high RPM through here any, uh, that high RPM. Uh, anyways, Cameron Taylor's already uh, given up the ghost on that. He is coming to pit or a, lot, a little early in the seven. We'll see. See how everyone's able to make it to the uh, if everyone's able to make it to the end. I'm not sure. Um, of course, you, you could say it could be doubtful that Taylor can make it from here to the end, but um, that kind of remains to be seen as Sue is in in the 80 car as well. I figured he'd be one of the first ones in as well. Cooper is in in the background. There are no factor. Cardell is in. Ditto. Uh, Vignon there as well. I see uh, that's Arto Kakinen and Adrian Devereaux in as well as one of the other Sylvan cars. And that's a little hard to tell who that car is in the back. Might be Kevin Dwyer. I think it is. As here is Kivala in the 57. That is Eklund in the 11 right behind him. Uh, we're just about... Oh, hang on to it. Eklund's going to have to bounce quite a charge if she's going to be able to um, make up some of the ground she's lost. But she's going to be able to dust off Kivala, I don't think, with too many problems. Uh, we'll see if Eklund's able to run down next car. I think might be in... Um, I'll see if she's able to run down second. But, um, oh, Kivala trying to fight for that as much as he can. Uh, we'll see if she's... We'll see how... Uh, uh, that, was that on Selmy back there? I don't think so. Um, uh... Those, those cars, next time that team shows up, they need to make those cars easier to, easier to tell apart from um, head-on. This is getting a little ridiculous. As Davenport um, in the 17 car, is he going to be coming in from the lead? Yes, looks like it. Here he comes, Davenport in for possibly the last time. Um, left a lot of time left in the race, though. Uh, where's the 19? There's Ingrid Hadland coming off the final corner. For 10 and in. Here we have the battle for 39th. So this will be worth a lot of points. All of zero because no matter who wins the battle for uh, this battle for position, Joe Olenek will have 10 points for winning the poll. And Cooper, well, they showed up and they made the race and they'll get a lot of prize money for it. But uh, to say they've had a good to say they've had a good race would be um, well a lie to put it mildly, as Hadland now assuming the lead of the race in car 19 because Davenport is in the pits. Now we'll see if she can make it to the end. And uh, she's dialed down her pace a little bit, so we'll see. I'm a little doubtful, but uh, anything can happen here. And um, also remember, every time after Hadland's pitted, She's always taken Davenport about a lap or two to catch back up. So here is Anselmi. That was Anselmi back there. I thought it was. Uh, 58 car trying to uh, give his team, trying to uh, harry his teammate here for the final podium spot. Now I should mention that there's never been an all Scandinavian podium when all three drivers represent different nations. There have been, there has been an all Scandinavian podium before. But uh, never with. But of course, there's always been uh, two Finns among that mix. Never been. Um, um, in this case, it would be a Finn, a Swede, and a uh, Norwegian. Uh, of course, in reverse order, as you see, uh, and Selmy taking third as Hadland is uh, trying to. Uh, Hadland's way out in front of Eklund as Eklund clears Scott Bates, who lets her go through. Um, that is Vander Schmidt right in front of Eklund, who has had a bit of a miserable day, but he's kept it in. He's kept his nose clean, and his pace is honestly not too bad. Uh, so uh, Peter Vander Schmidt, despite that incident early on, doing a good, doing a good job. 
as here is Cameron Taylor doing battle with Morgan Le Fay in the 49 car. Morgan Le Fay has come from well deep in the field to a pretty solid run in the points here. And that's something that LeFay has a bit of a knack for doing, as what on earth is Fitzgerald doing this time? My goodness, Carter Fitzgerald is, um, is definitely going, that's going to affect the battle for position here, because here comes LeFay right on by Taylor. And LeFay is going to have an advantageous run on, uh, I was going to, uh, on, um, the 60 car, but they get stuck behind Cardell, who is doing as best he can to stay out of the way. Taylor's going to get 12th back. But I don't know for how much longer he's going to have that position back because who knows where the 60's going. Um, Carter Fitzgerald, as, uh, as um, LeFay has to lift off there through uh, Mallet, that's giving great run here for Cameron Taylor to, uh, to assert 12th place. My goodness, that was a lot closer than it needed to be, though. Uh, LeFay having another run, trying to get another crack at him as Howard is letting him go by. Or and maybe not, as she slides, skates that car off the track. I think that might, there's, I don't think there's enough laps left for LeFay to get back up there, but we've seen stranger things before. As here comes Fischl in car number eight to try to get, I believe, ninth away from Alicia Reyes. Pat on the back to Reyes for this performance because she has done very, very well today. Uh, just even uh, given the circumstances of that entry, uh, Fischl, is he going to send it inside? No, Reyes has uh, got the door shut before he uh, even gets there. Fair defending there by Alicia Reyes and the Lynx Racing, uh, <laughs> sorry, LNX Racing Team. He aren't fooling anybody, guys. Um, Fischl uh, hanging back there in 10th as here is um, Washington and uh, trying to take that, uh, trying to take, I believe, 7th from Rachel Rainsford. Um... There is, oh, Rachel sends it in there. Not gonna, not quite gonna stick for Washington, or maybe it is because Rachel Rainsford was a bit out of shape. And here comes Kareem, the notorious, um, uh, as he's been um, uh, as one of the many nicknames that people have given him over his time in uh, the TM Light series. As uh, Washington sends it in to the uh, Kalela Harpin, but he skates it a bit wide. Rachel had an opportunity to get back on the inside, didn't take it, wasn't close enough. Davenport has some issues, and you may have noticed there was a white flag going up. Uh, there is Moore trying to get Davenport on the inside. This is going to be for fifth. Uh, no, everyone, nobody in front of them is looking like they've even come close to uh, peeking at the pits. Top four trying to make this work. Davenport uh, is going to have to fall in line behind Moore in uh, that car number 17. Uh, we're going to see where everyone else is though shortly. Uh, Davenport's throughout, trying to get this position. Is he, gonna, is he gonna be able to? No, he is not. Maybe he is, maybe he is. Davenport throwing it in. Is I don't think that's gonna stick though. No, I don't, no. Moore's got a great run coming off the, uh, coming off the, uh, coming down the long straightaway here into the Kalela turn. Uh, as um, Davenport got the inside. Is he? Does he have the better brakes? Does he have any brakes left? Thankfully they both do. Uh, Davenport trying to claim the spot for Moore, but it doesn't look like he's able to. Moore, great power off from the Volpe. And that's going to hold on to fifth place, it looks like. He looks like he's got it. But today, at the end of today, there's going to be one name on everyone's lips. Ingrid Hadland has been the overlooked driver so far at Lynx Racing. Most of her teammates have stolen the headlines at some stage throughout the season. However, Ingrid Hadland is going to do something that has never been done before. For the first time ever, we are going to hear the Norwegian National Anthem playing to celebrate Ingrid Hadeland's victory at the Coriola Grand Prix. And a very, very astute drive from Hadeland, charging early and managing it late. Eklund comes across the line in second, and Apo Anselmi on debut third. This means for the first time we have an all Scandinavian podium with three drivers from three different countries. Yuho Kibala was not far behind, coming home in fourth, and Tom Moore, the highest placing American driver, rounds out the top five. Davenport had a strong showing, but will have to settle for sixth. Washington, great effort on debut in seventh. 
Rachel Rainsford in eighth had a very quiet run through the field. Alicia Reyes in the LNX car and Saul Fischel rounds out the top 10. Purpura in 11th. Cameron Taylor's pit strategy relegated him to 12th. Morgan Lafayette charged all the way from 44th on the grid to finish 13th and strongly in the points. Good effort there. Su Xiaoyu in 14th. Stoidler 15th after a penalty. Woody Watts, Adrian Devereaux, Kurt Pliskin, and Taro Vertanen and Kevin Dwyer round out the points finishers. With this being a double points race, it invariably is going to have a massive impact on the Drivers' Championship. Fischl still leads the championship, but Davenport has moved up to second. Tom Moore moving up into third after a strong day. And the two Lynx Racing women, Eklund and Hadeland, fourth and fifth. Pliskin holds station in sixth. Cameron Taylor to seventh. Castaneda goes down to eighth, and Adrian Devereaux down to ninth. Atkins missed the race. Savarell didn't score points. Olenek got ten points for getting the pole. That moves him up to twelfth. David Krikorian holds station in thirteenth. Uh, then you have Rossini, Matthews, Kakadin, and then you have Apo and Selmi in car 58. This is his first start of the year, um, and he, that's already put him 17th in the championship just because, uh, well, scoring a podium in a double points race means quite a bit. Tony Durbin 18th. Uh, of course, Durbin was not in today's race. Kivalis hits 19th in the championship for the same reasons I mentioned with his teammate Anselmi. And Kuznetsov in 20th rounds out the top 20 in the championship. This is still only after seven races, and nobody is truly out of the title hunt just yet. And here's how the Independence Trophy looks after seven races. Keep in mind, no Independence Trophy cars were able to qualify for the Cariola Grand Prix, so this looks exactly the way it did after the round of Sweden. The Independence Trophy cars will rejoin the Tour for the round of Russia at the Miachkova Airport in Russia for the eighth round of the championship. If you'd like to watch some previous events in the series, check out this list over here, or check out this video from a friend of the show.